Well, welcome everyone. We're so excited that you could join us this afternoon for our virtual Closer Look. Um, it is a beautiful sunny day here on Somerdale's campus, um, so we can't wait to hopefully see you soon on campus, but right now we're excited to see you on Zoom. Um, today you're going to have the opportunity to learn about Central Penn and the student experience once you're on campus. Um, you're going to hear from admissions counselors, you're going to hear from financial aid, um, and our student services staff of how um, to be a successful college student once you start classes. Um, then we're going to give you a brief virtual tour so you can see what campus is like until you can get here in person. And we will also um, take a look inside the super suite. So all of you that are looking to live on campus, you'll get to actually see where you'll be staying as well. Um, we will also um, take a closer look um, at getting all your questions answered today. You'll get to win some prizes and you'll also end up getting a complimentary little swag bag in the mail. There's an exclusive closer look t-shirt that's coming your way. So you should be getting that in the next couple of weeks as well. So I just wanna take a minute and introduce uh, my fellow friends and colleagues on this call with us. Um, so I'm gonna to introduce to you first the admission staff that you guys have probably worked with um, and financial aid, and then all the other um, staff and faculty you're going to get to meet in a little bit here um, when we get to student services. So I am Lisa Seifert. I'm the director of recruitment here at Central Penn College. And joining me, um, Amy Reinhold, if you want to unmute yourself to say hi. Hi, everyone. So I'm sitting here smiling because I'm seeing faces that I've never met in person. Hi, Craig. And I see other names, but you don't have your cameras on. Would you guys be able to turn your cameras on if you can? Um, I just I see a lot of names of people that I've been talking to, emailing. Hi, Maddie. Morgan, sorry, I'm a nerd. Um, just so happy to see you guys, see your faces. Um, I work with PTA and um, so happy to have you guys, you know, most of you accepted and to be starting in July. I can't wait to meet you in person. Thanks, Amy. Um, I also have Asia Sargent. Asia, do you want to say hello? Hi, everyone. Welcome and thank you for attending. And then we also have Amy Brocliffe. Hi there, it's good to see so many of you here with us today. And Jaime Ramos. Hello everybody, so happy for all of you who are considering or already decided to join our family. We hope that today is resourceful and don't hesitate to ask any questions in the chat box. And then we have John Steindell. Hey everybody, welcome. Nice to meet you virtually. <laughs> Thanks for joining in today. <laughs> and then last but not least, Kelly Fox. Hi everyone, welcome. All right, guys, um, a few reminders before we actually get um, started here is if you could take a minute, and most of you have, but in your name, if you could put your first and last name um, up on the screen, that would be helpful so we can count attendance today. Um, because if you are just checking us out and getting more information or you're going through the application process, this does count as your interview. So you um, may have already sent me back your interview sheet. If you haven't, um, definitely check your email. I sent it to you yesterday morning um, and send that back in so we can get that taken care of. And like Amy so nicely asked you, we'd love to see your smiling, beautiful faces. So if you have the ability to turn on your cameras, we would love to see you and connect with you that way. Um, and if you don't, no worries. We're just glad that you're here and you can listen in. Um, and down on the lower bar, you're going to see your chat window. Um, we're going to use that today um, to answer any questions that you may have. So there is a spot um, towards the end of the program that we'll be going through all of your questions so you guys can hear the answers all together. So you can put them in as any time that they pop in your head and we will answer them all today. Um, next, what we're going to do is we're going to break out into two different rooms because some of you today are going through the process of um, starting applying, getting more information, and others are already accepted into the program and starting in either our summer or our fall terms. Um, so we're going to separate you into two different rooms um, for a presentation and then bring you all back into the main room to talk about student life and our tour and all of that. So um, right now, if you are 
um, a prospective student that you're just popped on today to hear more about Central Penn or you just applied, you're gonna pick breakout room one when it appears on your screen. If you are already accepted and you're planning on starting with us in our summer July term or our fall October term, you will choose room number two. If for any reason that you don't see that screen pop up or you don't see down in the breakout rooms, just put in the chat what room you need to get to and we will get you there. And then once um, we finish those presentations, we'll all meet back here in the main room and get started with the rest of the afternoon. So Derek, if you wanna pop up the breakout rooms and then you can just choose your room. Perfect. All right, guys. So if you wanna go on, um, we already moved past all the acceptance stuff, Derek. So we're on to like the objectives today. All right, so we're gonna discuss with you over the next 20 to 30 minutes here, um, basically what awaits you here at Central Penn. Um, we'll also talk about the next steps after you've been accepted, um, talk about placement exams and why we do those and what to expect. Um, from them, um, the importance of the student resources offered on campus to help you navigate um, being a su successful college student, um, and also um, completing your financial aid process, and talking to you about scholarships, the housing scholarship that we just rolled out here last month. Um, that's super exciting um, that most of you probably got some emails about um, or phone calls from Kelly. Um, so we're going to go over that today, just in case you missed any of that. And then how um, we have changed campus a little bit for COVID-19 responses. Um, so we'll go over some of those changes and what to expect on campus when you arrive. And then next, I'm going to talk to you about the campus amenities. So there's a lot of things um, to do on our campus. So you're gonna see in this picture behind you, this is taken an aerial view over um, the bridge that connects um, our ATEC main building to the rest of the um, campus with, in the quad there. Um, so you're gonna see a lot of these pictures throughout the time. But um, some of the campus amenities that we have is we have the leadership library. So um, we do have a full library. And if there's ever any books or anything that you're looking for from there and you can't find it, we do have relationships with other libraries in the area that we can get materials in for you. Um, also, if you're looking for, um, like say your laptop breaks while you're here or it's getting fixed or you're waiting for one to come in, we do have rental laptops as well in the library. Um, we do have a night and day cafe. Um, the night and day cafe is where if you're eating on campus, so if you live there, that's where your meal plans are going to be. And um, that houses your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, also, if you are a commuter or if you're an online student and you're just popping in to visit for the day, um, you can um, go down to there and eat. Um, you can use cash, credit, whatever, you don't need to have a meal plan um, to eat there. Um, we do have a swimming pool on campus, so you can utilize that whether you live here or you're a commuter. Um, so definitely take advantage of that, get some sun during um, the summertime. Um, you'll see a lot of our students hanging out there between classes. Um, we also have um, a lot of recreational courts, so if you like to play basketball, um, there's a soccer field, um, and we um, have Casey Hicks will be on with us a little bit later, who is our athletic director, and she's doing a bunch of fun intramural sports as well um, throughout. Um, we do them in the summertime and the fall. Um, we also have um, a student lounge um, that's located in our main building um, so that you can study there. There's vending machines. Um, we do um, some meetings and things in there as well with our students. Um, we also have a fitness center, a dance studio, and a Capitol Blue Cross Theater. Um, so all three of those things are actually located in what we call our underground. Um, so you can work out. If you are a dancer, you can definitely go and um, dance in the studio. Um, the Capitol Blue Cross Theater, um, we do we bring in um, different acts. Um, they do do seminars and different things in there as well. Um, we do have a UPMC health clinic. Um, so if you're ever feeling a little under the weather, it is free. It's a walk-in clinic on campus for our students. 
Um, we do have a student fellowship area that is outside and we do some programming in there. Um, we also have multi-purpose rooms, hands-on learning labs, um, the bridge that I was just talking that connects through campus. Um, so a little fact is we actually purchased that bridge for only $22. Um, so that's always a trivia question. Um, so that might come up later. So there's the answer to it if it does. Um, so you can hopefully win a prize. Um, the gaming center. Um, so if you are a gamer, um, they have a bunch of different um, gaming computers. Um, they do have a club that you can play against other colleges. Um, there is a huge TV in there too that you can stream different things on too. So you don't have to be a gamer to use the lab. It can be used from other things as well. And then um, a career services center, um, which Steve Hassinger will speak to you guys about a little bit later. But um, so they help you prepare for jobs um, as you're going through school here. Our activities and our athletics. Um, so you definitely wanna get involved. Um, getting involved on campus, it'll make your time here so much more exciting. Um, but if you don't want to, you don't have to. Um, but if you, these are open to our online students, our commuters, and our on-campus um, students. So our student clubs, so we have over 25 different clubs and organizations. And if you don't see um, a club on our list, they are all listed on our website. Um, so the advantage of being a smaller campus is if you have a great idea for a new club, um, we're happy to hear it. Um, and Adrian, who will be on later, um, can help you get um, the club that you are interested in, hopefully started if you have enough interest. Um, we also do a CPC gives back. Um, we call it our, our night quest. So we pick a community service project and work on that. Um, our nightlife, and um, that is basically all the different programming that student services and activities will provide. Um, so they do like a bingo, they do um, trivia nights, um, they do also programming during the daytime while you're here for classes, so everybody can kind of take advantage of participating and getting to know um, other students and other programs. Um, yesterday they had a, the green team on campus had a lawn party, so there was um, cam jam there, there was a cookout, they had, um, they were tie-dyeing t-shirts and masks, so there's always something going on um, to keep life a little interesting here. Um, our fall harvest and homecoming, so that's our big homecoming celebration, so mark your calendars now. Um, it's coming up on October 15th and 16th this year. Um, so that's definitely a time to bring your families to campus. It's beautiful in the fall um, and we'll have lots of activities going on. So you'll be getting lots of information on that. Um, but we always try and make that a really fun event for you and your families. And you get to meet alumni and the staff and faculty are all there. So it's just a really great time. So definitely mark your calendars for that. Um, we do offer men's sports and women's sports here. So you'll see that um, on the men's side, we have basketball, soccer, and baseball. On the women's side, currently we have basketball, soccer, and volleyball. So if you're interested in any of those sports, you just let our admissions counselors know and we'll be happy to help you um, get in touch with the coaches. Um, there's usually tryouts and um, then you can work on it. And if you've never played any of these sports, but you always wanted to try out volleyball, say, um, you definitely can. So you don't need prior experience to do it. Then we also have something exciting that we just rolled out here um, during the last term um, with our alumni association. So our alumni are really involved um, in your futures. So they wanna help give back as well. So by starting classes, um, granted to all current students from the day that you start classes, so whether you're starting with us on July 5th or October 4th, this will happen, um, you're gonna be an associate level membership. Um, you can see on our website the different levels. So you can obviously um, you know, move up different levels and membership as well. But um, the benefits at the associate level include um, a PSECU member eligibility, a subscription to our Pendulum magazine, um, which comes out during the year. And it's all about Central Penn and the campus and what's going on um, on campus and through our alumni as well. Um, and then obviously 
we always like to give away free gifts here. So free gifts for showing the alumni engagement office your next, ter next terms course registration. So as you're here and you're continuing through classes, if you stop by their office to show them that, you'll get free gifts throughout your time here too. Right. And then this is something um, that you probably have gotten several emails about, but we do have our own Central Penn College app. Um, it houses a lot of different um, things like it lists all the different events on campus. It lists, if you have a question, you can put it in there. So it kind of works like an Instagram. Um, sometimes they post if they're buying and selling textbooks. So there's different tracks that you can follow. So you definitely, if you haven't downloaded it, definitely do because it does give you um, current information and sometimes like anything that they would email out and stuff too, they do post there. So like weather closings, um, that kind of stuff. Um, you can get it either in the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. Um, so it is available. You just search for Central Penn College and then you can sign up. So we would love for you to do that and you can do that at any time. So our next steps, we're actually gonna talk a little bit um, about how to accept your offer and some of the events coming up. So Kelly, go ahead and take it away. Okay, so many of you on here have already paid your $100 tuition deposit, and that is how we know you are definitely planning on attending so that we can schedule you for classes, and if you are planning to live here, place you in housing. So what that does for our summer students, for those of you that have paid the tuition deposit, we will register you for classes next week, if you can believe that. Because you pay the $100, we'll schedule you for classes, we'll place you in housing, and then I'll be emailing out your tuition bill around May 21st, and the summer tuition bills are due June 11th. For those of you looking at our fall term, if you've already paid the $100, I will be scheduling you for classes the first week in August. I'll email you, and if you listed your parents on your application, your parents, your tuition bill August 20th, and it is due September 10th. So only the students who have paid the deposit will be registered for classes and placed in housing if you're living on campus. And it is not additional fee. You'll see it comes right off your first tuition bill. It just kind of lets us know who is actually planning on attending so we can make sure you're scheduled for classes. So move-in weekend. For those of you looking at living on campus, for the summer term, the move-in weekend will start Saturday, July 3rd. For those of you looking at our fall term, your move-in weekend starts Saturday, October 2nd. So save those dates for those of you looking to live on campus, either summer or fall. Do you want me to go over orientation, Lisa? Okay. So the orientation for our summer, we're still working out the details because obviously it's over the July 4th weekend, um, but we will, as soon as we make that decision, we will get that out to our summer students. Our fall term, again, same thing. We are offering classes now Monday through Friday. So we're still working out when your orientation will actually be, but classes for summer begin Monday, July 5th, and classes for fall begin Monday, October 4th. Thanks, Kelly. Um, I couldn't get myself unmuted there. <laughs> All right. So like Kelly said, just keep checking your emails. Um, and obviously, I mean, all of you guys, I think, on here today probably got a text and an email from me, and I know you guys were very responsive. So typically, we'll send out all that important information, all those different ways, um, and we followed up probably with a phone call as well if we didn't hear from you. Um, so we'll definitely get you that information as soon as we know it. Um, I wanted to talk, take a minute and talk to you a little bit about placement exams, what they are, why we do it. Um, so Central Penn administers a placement exam to all incoming students. Um, the placement exam assessment is a self-adaptive test used to determine placements in mathematics. So basically, it's just to let us know, it's not a scary thing, it's just to let us know what math to start you in. Like, are we starting you in the 100 level math or have you already transferred in that? Stuff like that. So. And that's what we're trying to find out with this. You do get two different attempts to take this. So you probably have not received this yet um, because we haven't started um, like registering for classes or anything like that um, at this point. So they'll be coming over the next couple weeks. So you will be notified by email about it um, if you have to take it. If you're wondering, do I have to take this? You can always reach out to your admissions counselor or myself and we'll post um, our contact information here in a minute. Um, but 
typically, if when you take the exam, you do have to score a 75 or higher. It usually um, takes about an hour of your time to take this. And once you start it, you do have to complete it um, in one setting. Um, if you do score 75 or higher, great, we'll be in touch. It'll tell you at that minute. If you score below a 75, you do get a second chance to retake it. Um, we do have a, what we call, we developed a math boot camp. Um, that will show up in your Blackboard that if you just want to kind of refresher on some of the things that you saw in the first test before you take the second exam, um, you can. Um, if you choose not to, then we'll start you in what we call our developmental math. Um, so you'll get all of this in um, the email as well. Um, students can be exempt from this. Um, if you have taken the SATs and you score a 410 or higher in math, if you took the ACTs and you have a composite score higher than 21, and if you transferred in um, a 100 level um, college math course. Um, so any of those three things, then you don't, you won't get a notification about this. Um, but if you have any questions after this today, feel free to reach out and ask us. Um, or if you think, oh, I don't think I sent in my SATs or ACTs, Definitely do, and we'll take a look at them and let you know. All right, so mycentralpen.edu. So most of you have already probably started um, doing this because um, I know a lot of you on this call, I'm recognizing names, and I know some of you have already paid your deposits and all that, but we do have a single sign-on. Um, system here at Central Pen. So this is going to allow you one time, you have to set this up, you log in with your username and password, remember your password, put it in a safe place. Um, you can always reset it, but um, we can only help you <laughs> navigate how to get in, but we don't know your passwords. So you'd be surprised how many times we get asked that. Um, but once you log in, you'll be able to access your student email, Blackboard, which is our online learning platform, um, class schedules, your textbooks, and um, your Office 365. So you'll be able to access all of those things. So since you were already accepted, you should have received, um, it came from Help Desk um, or probably forwarded to from Help Desk from your admissions counselors, because sometimes we send them out anyway, just to make sure it doesn't get stuck in your junk or spam. Um, but if you haven't seen it, definitely check the junk and spam because it might be there. And if you really can't find it, just reach out to any one of us on this call and we will get you the login um, so you can get that all set up. Okay, textbooks. Textbooks are a very important part of what makes you successful. So for our summer students, your textbook list um, will be available June 1. So you'll log into your portal, you'll click on the bookstore, you'll enter in the classes that you're taking and all your books will pop up. For those of you for our fall class, your book list becomes available on September 7th. So our bookstore is online. You cannot purchase books on campus here. So just be prepared to order your books online. Um, for some of you working through the financial aid process, you have already, you know, we've talked about getting book vouchers. Vouchers are available for students who overborrow on their student loans or parent loans. We issue those to you right after the tuition bills are due. So you'll get an email to your central pen account with a username and password. You'll go right to the bookstore, enter that in, and you'll be able to actually use your financial aid to cover your books. For those of you who are not using a book voucher, we do provide the ISBN number, so you can purchase your books from anywhere. We provide the list through our book vendor, MBS, but you can take the ISBN and shop around for your books. Scholarships. So our scholarships are still open. So you can go to our website, centralpen.edu slash scholarships. You can submit the application for any of them that you meet the qualifications for. Um, we do match outside scholarships up to $1,000. So for some of you who are just graduating high school, I know award ceremonies are typically in early June. So as you know that you're receiving scholarships, please send that information into us. Not only will we work with your scholarship to make sure that it's applied here, but we will then also match it up to $1,000. So our academic opportunity and regional scholarships all just have an essay that you have to submit. And again, you do it right through our website. Our early start scholarship is for students who are not in the PTA program, but who start in our summer term, which again begins July 5th. And then we have an excellent scholarship that's awarded to you um, once you've been through the admissions process, depending on your GPA. 
So some financial aid reminders, and I see most of you on here I've worked with, I know I'm just making sure that all of you, especially those of you that are Pennsylvania residents, that you need to have that FAFSA submitted by May 1st. And I realize most of you have, but if for some of you have not yet, please make sure that FAFSA is submitted by May 1st. If you submit it after May 1st, you'll still be considered for all of the federal financial aid, just not the state via grant if you're a Pennsylvania resident. I will email you missing financial aid forms. Of course, I will text and call you as well, but the fastest way to get the forms is through your email. If for some reason you don't have a printer or you need help, let me know. We do have um, DocuSign where I can send everything into you um, electronically. I've been making phone calls to some of you already about the state FIA grant. They do have additional paperwork that you'll need to complete. So just make sure that, you know, as you receive these phone calls or fee is emailing you, you complete that so we can figure out exactly what you're looking for or how much you're eligible for in the state via grant. Looks like everybody's back into the main room now. All right, so Jaime, if you wanna tell them about the tour, most definitely. So hope you guys had great breakout room sessions. And now we're going to virtually show you a tour of our campus. So my colleague, Amy Rowcliffe and I took some time and we wanted to virtually show you what we have to offer for those of you who are considering us and you haven't seen our campus yet. This will be a great opportunity for that. And for those of you who have, have accepted and you know you'll be here and you haven't yet seen the campus, just as good to see the campus. So. We are sharing our screen and we hope you guys enjoy the tour. Welcome to Central Penn College. My name is Amy Rowcliffe and I am one of the high school outreach coordinators here at Central Penn. We're going to take a little tour to show you some of the many nice things here on campus. We're standing in front of our Advanced Technology Education Center, or ATEC for short, which houses many classrooms and departments. You can find our computer lab with 3D printing, our applied science labs, our esports gaming center. We also have our learning center staffed with personnel to assist you with study skills, writing assignments, or tutoring for a specific class. Our education foundation also is located in ATEC and offers scholarships two times per year. Make sure to keep your eyes open for those. Let's go inside. Welcome to our night day cafe. Here's where our students eat their meals and socialize. There's a variety of options available here for students. There's plenty of room to eat in the cafe, and you can also take your food to go. Here's one of our lab classrooms that's set up to give real world experience to our allied health students. As you can see, these rooms are a little more unique than most other classrooms. The desks are massage tables that can be used to practice therapy exercises or measure range of motion. The equipment located throughout the lab is used to learn hands-on skills. It's such a nice day today. How about if we head outside and see some other parts of our beautiful campus? Welcome to your own bridge to success, our historic Kenzie's Bridge. Hey Amy, are you giving a tour? Yes, Jaime, how are you? Hi. You wanna join us? Absolutely. Hey everybody, my name is Jaime Ramos and I am also a high school outreach coordinator here at Central Penn College. A fun fact about the bridge right behind us is that one of the college's former presidents purchased this 1800s era bridge at an auction for just $22. How about Amy? We head to the center of campus to show them what we have. Welcome to the center of our campus. Where we are right now is our quad area, a site of fun activities throughout the year, including our back to class blast, fall harvest, and so much more. To my right, Bollinger Hall, where you can find the office of residence site, the mailroom, public safety, as well as our advising center, career resources, and a 24-7 night owl, which is our computer lab for our students. Back towards me, one of our most unique features of our campus is our outdoor pool. We have a campus-wide Wi-Fi available for you, so on warm days, you can find students studying poolside and enjoying the sun. To my left, right here is Milano Hall, named after our college president, who bought Central Penn from downtown Harrisburg it's a beautiful suburban summer day. Now we're gonna head back to the underground where we'll meet back up with Amy. The underground has something for everyone. Let's go join Jaime. If you're looking for a place to relax and hang out with friends, head here to the student lounge. 
In our underground here, there is also a fitness center and a dance studio so you can stay fit and active. Now that we're done checking out our underground, let's go check out our student housing. Follow me. Hey everybody, welcome to our super suite. It's time to show you around. Students love our super suites. It is the best of both worlds. You share a common area with up to six other students, but every student has their very own room. The suites come furnished with furniture, microwave, compact fridge, and you and your suitemates can choose to bring your own TV and gaming systems. You share the bathroom with only one other person, and you can see the shower and the vanity are conveniently separated. Each bedroom in our super suite comes with a desk, a chair, and a bed that can be adjusted for height and a dresser as well. You can decorate it in your own way. If you choose to bring a small fridge, you're more than welcome to do that. And you can also bring a TV if you'd like. The beds are twin XL, which makes it really nice and roomy. You've heard all about our housing scholarship already. That housing scholarship gives you the opportunity to experience our residential campus here at Central Penn College. That's our tour. Thank you for joining us. We would love to invite you to campus for our in-person tour. If you would prefer, you can also visit centralpen.edu for our self-guided virtual tour. Thank you and go Knights. So that is our tour of campus. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I will pass it back to Lisa and then you will have the opportunity to speak to our student services staff. Thanks so much, Jaime and Amy, for that lovely tour of campus. So I hope you guys got a little sneak peek on if you haven't been to campus yet. Um, I hope that helps you visualize where you're going to be um, spending the next year or more um, of your life with us. Um, so I'm going to take a minute to introduce you um, to our um, student services staff. Um, so they're going to go around. I'm going to introduce each of them so you know who they are. And then they're going to tell you a little bit about how they're going to help you um, over the time that you're a student here. So I'm going to actually get started here um, with our first year experience director, Ms. Janet Bixler. Hi everybody, I'm Janet Bixler and as, thank you Lisa, as she mentioned, I'm the director of first year experience. So I primarily work with students in their first, second and third term, whether they are residential, if they're commuter or if they're part of our continuing ed population. I also work with our students who are all online. Um, my work focuses on connecting the student to fellow students, to their faculty and to the staff as well as to the community around our college. I uh, create different activities and programs to help the students uh, bond together and form stronger relationships with each other, help them manage their time, help them work out the best ways to study and get their work done. And I'm also just a resource and an anchor. If a student doesn't know who to ask or how to solve their problem, then they can reach out to me. I'm located in the underground and I am right across from the student lounge and beside the health center space. And I often have a lot of students coming in just sporadically and spontaneously. They sit down, they talk, they tell me about how the classes are going. Sometimes we actually make meetings and the student and I will create success plans together, which helps them manage their time, helps them keep in perspective their work life, their family life, their social life, and their school life. So I do a lot of different things. Um, I'm also the advisor of the Drama Club, CP Players, and I'm the co-advisor of our student broadcast, The Night Way. Um, other than that, uh, one of the really great initiatives we created in the first year experience is Nights at the Round Table. And that's the opportunity for our newest Nights to meet with our president, Dr. Linda Fredrizzi Williams, and spend an hour with her in an informal conversation. She is open to answer basically any question the student has. In the past, when we have done nights at the round table, the students have asked really serious questions like, how has COVID affected you as president of a college? And she was very transparent. She gave a lot of details. 
Other times the students will ask very uh, kind of fun get to know you questions. If you could go back to any era, what, what era would you go back to? And when we do this time with our president, Dr. Linda Fredrici Williams, the students really engage. We have a full hour and the students take up the whole hour asking and dialoguing, asking questions and dialoguing with the president. Um, after the fact, the students usually will talk to me and they will tell me how surprised they are that our president, uh, Dr. Fredrizi Williams, is so down to earth. She is so friendly and she's so accessible. Um, many of us who have gone to college before this uh, will let you know that we've never, we never had the opportunity to meet our college president. And we certainly didn't have an opportunity to meet our college president in an informal way and really get to know them. And then our students realize the benefit of really getting to know our president is that she's a, an amazing resource for networking because our school has a giant network in the community of where our students can find internships and employment. So it really starts day one and goes all the way into commencement. So welcome if you plan on enrolling or do attend this term coming up or the next. And I hope all the prospective students really take time to engage in what we have to offer and maybe we will see you on campus. Have a great rest of the event. Thank you so much, Janet. All right, next up that's gonna talk to you is Caitlin Kopis. She's the director of our Student Advising Center. Hi everyone, thanks for being here. Uh, so like you just heard, I'm with the Advising Center and I work with our two other student success coaches, Dan and Michelle, to make up our student success and advising team. Our goal at the Student Success and Advising Center is to support you from enrollment to graduation. We're here to assist you with degree planning, discovering and growing your strengths, and helping you navigate every step of your college experience. We're the primary advisors for some students, but we're here to support every student at Central Penn. As a student, you will hear from Central Penn Advising pretty frequently. We reach out almost every week via email with tips for success, information about upcoming programs, important reminders, and encouraging messages because we want to remind you that even when college feels kind of hard, you're awesome and you're doing great. We're also here anytime you want to reach out to us. Our goal is to support you and connect you with resources whenever you need it. We're here to be your point of contact when you know you need something, but you need a little help just figuring out where to start. We don't have all the answers. I'm not going to promise you that, but we will always point you in the right direction. So now I know some of you are really eagerly looking forward to starting classes in summer and fall. So here are a few reminders, especially for those of you who are really getting closer to enrolling. If you're starting in summer and you've been accepted and paid your deposit, you will hopefully be able to access your course schedule in the student portal in just the next week or two. If you're starting in fall, you should be able to access your course schedule in late July or early August, as long as you've been accepted and paid your deposit by that time. Make sure to view your schedule as soon as it's available and reach out to your admissions counselor if you have any questions about it and they can put you in touch with me or, or whoever can best help answer your questions about your schedule. If you're still working through the admissions and financial aid processes, that is great and we'll get you scheduled as soon as you're at the right point in the process. Once your schedule is available, it'll still be a few more weeks until you can order textbooks. So summer textbook ordering is gonna start at the beginning of June and then for fall at the end of August. And our bookstore is online just so you know, so uh, you will definitely wanna order your books before the term starts and we can help you out if you have any questions about it. And uh, one last thing I'll mention here, one thing that we always recommend to students as you're getting ready to start is completing something called Blackboard Orientation. And some of you will start getting access to that soon. That's Central Penn's learning management system. Um, and your professors will use it for all kinds of things. We wanna help you get familiar with it so you have a chance to do a practice course and learn what it's like to be using that system even before the term starts. So thanks for being here today. I can't wait to see you on campus or online again sometime soon. And in the meantime, please uh, keep putting those questions in the chat and we'll be getting to them as we go along. Thank you. Thanks, Caitlin. And thanks for the reminder, Caitlin. Um, all the questions um, that you're putting in the chat, we are seeing, um, we are monitoring them and we're gonna get to them here in a few minutes after you hear from all the other student services staff. 
Um, we are um, up next is going to be our Learning Center Director, Megan Rehm. Hi, everybody. I'm Director of the Learning Center. I'm Megan. And our Learning Center is primarily where students come if they want some help in their courses from tutors. So I know that tutoring might sound like it's something for students who are failing, but I promise that students who are just barely doing less than they wanted to come and get help also. We have students that I've been working with this afternoon who are noticing that, you know, they're getting a downward slide in their grades and so they're looking for some tips about how to study more effectively, how to take tests more effectively, what can they do to improve their performance in their classes so that they can continue progressing in their degree and that's exactly what we like to do. We primarily focus on helping students with their writing, with their math classes, accounting, anatomy, and in general, just the study skills that everybody needs to be successful in college. So I know some of you have already planned to attend Central Penn, and I really look forward to seeing you here. I do try to see all of the new students at the college just to let them know what our service is and if they're on campus to invite them to come. If they're not on campus, I also invite them to meet with our tutors online because we do virtual chats like this to help talk students through some of their schoolwork and help them make improvements. If you are still deciding whether or not to come, I wanna give you some assurance that the tutoring that we offer at Central Penn is at no cost to the students and that we collaborate very closely with faculty members to make sure that we're providing the best support that we can to individuals. The other thing that I want to mention that is helpful to students is something that the Learning Center hosts called the Math Boot Camp. The math classes here are built in stages and if you want to get into the stage of like college algebra then you need to pass a algebra placement test or have a qualifying SAT, ACT score, that sort of thing. And in order to prepare for the algebra placement test, some students feel like they need just a refresher on the algebra that they learned in high school. And so we have a math boot camp that is offered for free and it's an online course that's self-guided and students can complete it just to give themselves a refresher of algebra before they take the algebra placement test. Now there is a whole course that students can pay for and take that'll be a full term and really help build their confidence in math. It's a great course. And that's for those who didn't feel like they got the algebra foundation in high school that they needed. But for those who got a foundation and just need to remember it, we have that boot camp available and your admissions counselor can give you more information about that. Thank you so much, Fagan. All right, um, I'm next gonna introduce you to John Ashman, who is our counseling services therapist. Hey everybody, I am John and I am here representing Central Pins Counseling Center. So myself, along with my supervisor, Tom, and our intern, Whitney, make up counseling services here at Central Penn College. The three of us are mental health professionals who are here to provide free and confidential counseling to any and all Central Penn students. So we know that a lot is happening in the world right now. And that means that a lot is happening in the lives of our students and a lot is happening in the lives of everyone in this room. So for anyone transitioning into Central Penn College, we're here to provide guidance, emotional support, and a shoulder to lean on for any student that is having a mental health concern or who simply needs someone to listen. Students can come and see us for any reason. Sometimes that could be because they're feeling anxious or depressed. Other times it could be relationship difficulties or just plain old unexpected life events. Regardless of the reason, as long as you're enrolled at Central Penn, you will have access to the Counseling Center for no cost, meaning that it's already covered by your tuition. It's also confidential, and that means that when you talk with us and what you say in session in the Counseling Center stays there and is not available to the remainder of the college. Tom and I work to ensure that students who come in feel safe, feel heard, and get to develop new toolkits and skill sets that better help them navigate their time at college. Right now, we're available both in person and through telehealth. 
for physical sessions, we're following college guidelines, wearing masks, and engaging in social distancing to make sure that we're protecting everyone's physical safety. In addition, we're also available for telehealth services through either video chat or phone. And this allows us to connect with students anywhere across the state of PA. Um, I'm going to go ahead and throw up the link to our web page as well as our email up in the chat for anyone who wants to reach out or learn a little bit more about us. But other than that, all I can say is uh, thank you for coming to Central Penn College and for considering us and we look forward to getting to know you real soon. Thanks, John. All right, next up we have Megan Peterson, who is our Dean of Equity and Multicultural Affairs. Hello, everyone. Yes, I am the other Megan in Student Services, um, the Dean of Equity and Multicultural Affairs, the Interim Dean of Student Success. And there are five areas of the college that I'm just going to kind of briefly tell you about um, that fall under the Center for Equity. So within the Center for Equity, we have um, the college's Title IX office, which is an office that offers um, education and prevention program, as well as support services for students who may need it. We also have our Student Rights and Responsibilities office, so if a student ever has a, um, a concern, they're not really sure how to resolve it or how to go about um, getting help in resolving a concern, um, my office can um, act as an advocate for students and help students kind of navigate resolving um, any concerns that they might have. We also have a multi multicultural affairs. Um, so fun um, multicultural and cultural competency programming, ways to expand your horizons and learn more. Um, we have our PACT program, which is a program for um, some of our first year students and coordinating with um, our first year experience on that. Um, and then finally, disability support services, which I'll talk, um, kind of spend the most time talking about. It's usually where we get the most questions. So for disability support services, um, we work with students who may need um, accommodations in their classes or in other areas of their college experience. So if you are a student that had an IEP or a 504 plan in high school, you most likely will qualify for accommodations at the college level. Um, so we work with students to get the documentation in place, get a letter of approved accommodation in place. And then it's really student directed in terms of how students choose to use those accommodations. So I can work with students to contact faculty directly on their behalf, or students can have that conversation with their faculty. Students can choose what classes they're using their accommodations in. Um, but disability support services, is the office of the college that would work with students to get those accommodation letters in place. Um, the most commonly requested accommodations tend to be around testing. So either having extended time on tests or a private, private place to take a test, um, maybe having test questions read aloud by a proctor. And we do have a designated space on campus for that. Um, we have a testing center where we can work with students to schedule um, their exams to happen in the testing center if they have approved accommodations in place. And we also work with students who may have um, assistive technology accommodation needs, whether that be access to um, audio versions of textbooks or um, recording devices, things of that nature. And we also work with residential students um, who are applying for emotional support animals. So again, if you had an IEP or a 504 plan um, in high school, you most likely would qualify for collegiate accommodations. Um, so I'm going to put my contact info in the chat. So if you have any questions, you can reach out to me directly. Um, but we support students with all types of disabilities. So that be a learning disability, a physical disability, um, psychological disabilities, such as depression, anxiety, PTSD, um, or disabilities that are a result of a traumatic brain injury. So any type of disability, disability support services is here and happy to help. Thank you so much, Megan. All right, and next we have Steve Hassinger, who's been waiting patiently to tell you all about Career Services. He's the Dean of Career Services. Hi, everybody. Uh, yeah, I'm the Dean of Career Services and Development, and um, I've been at Central Penn a long time, um, 18 and a half years, and I've worked in Career Services that whole time. Um, so Career Services is all about getting a job or an internship or advancing in your career, developing your career, anything that has to do with your career development. Uh, you can come to Career Services and uh, we can provide assistance for you. Just by looking around the, the virtual room here that we have, I can tell that while we have a lot of people probably coming right from high school, we have some people who um, maybe have some more life experience, uh, maybe military experience, etc. So you're probably at very different stages in your career development. 
And we try to offer very personalized, individualized assistance because we work with people from probably age 17 to 69 or 70 um, who are students. And we also offer assistance to our alumni. So once you graduate from Central Penn, we don't say, hey, great job, see you, good luck. Um, you can always come back to career services and we can always provide assistance to you. So I have worked with people who have graduated as far back as 1969, believe it or not. We will help you with what I call the nuts and bolts of job searching. So the resumes, the cover letters, the interview skills, we do mock interviews with you. Um, maybe you've got some really good experience, but now you're shifting into a different area with your degree and you're not quite sure how to take that current resume that you have that, that was really good for the job that you have and transition it to the career that you want to get. So we can really help you with those transferable skills and adjusting that resume to the job that you want to get. Maybe you're just looking for a part-time job while you're a student um, and you're working on your degree. We post jobs every day on our online career center, part-time jobs, temporary, permanent jobs, career opportunities, internship opportunities. Um, so we can help you with all of those things. Kristen Fike is another member of our team who is an internship coordinator. So she's gonna work with you in the internship process, um, unless you're in one of our allied health programs like physical therapy assisting or occupational therapy assisting. There you have a faculty member writing your program who is going to do that with you. We also hold events and workshops every term on campus um, or virtually. Obviously, most of them have been virtually. We're transitioning over the next six months here where we're gonna do some virtual events as well as some in-person events. So we have job fairs, we have networking events, uh, we have workshops. Um, so look for those. We, we're gonna put those out through Student Central, our e-newsletter that goes out we're going to have flyers around campus and reach out to you via email about events. Through our online career center, you can have access to your own website. So if you don't know anything about HTML or how to set up a website, but you want to have your own URL, your own unique website that you can link to your social media accounts, we can make that available. So there's a lot of different ways that we can help you throughout your career development. Uh, the most important thing I would say is come and see us, reach out to us, email us, however you want to connect with us. Uh, we have an email address of career services at centralpen.edu and we will put out a newsletter to you at the beginning of each term that will come through your student email so connect with us let us know how we can help if you're on campus here in Somerdale um, we also keep our candy jar well stocked so just stop by say hello and have some candy in between classes so let us know how we can help you we're looking forward to seeing you thank you so much Steve all right, last but not least, we have our Director of Residence Life, Lindsay Garber. So everybody always wants to talk about housing and has lots of questions about that. So Lindsay. <laughs> happy to help, happy to help. So um, as Lisa said, my name is Lindsay Garber. I'm the Director of Student Housing and Residence Life here at Central Penn College. Um, just the makeup of our department right now. So we have um, two residence hall coordinators that are part-time adult staff that live on campus and help work with our students, mostly in the after hours on weekends. And then we also have an RA program, which is a resident assistant program. So we have student RAs and we also have senior RAs. So the senior RAs has more leadership, more oversight um, of our RA program. Um, they're a great group of students. We are currently in the process of accepting applications right now this term. You know, everyone will ask me this at some point in time, but we only hire RAs once a year. It happens in the spring term. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you come in, get your grades up and come chat with me and we'll be happy to tell you some more about getting involved with the RA program. Also, some of the services that we have here on campus for housing, we oversee all of the mail, the packages, delivery, mailboxes, mailbox keys. I know some of you will lose your mailbox key at least once. Don't worry, come see us, we'll help you out. Um, if you have questions or you have issues with addresses, things like that, reach out to us. We can help you get situated with that as well, especially for anyone getting care packages or textbooks sent here. We can help. Um, we also handle move requests. Um, we handle roommate conflicts in our office. Um, not everyone's going to get along at every point. You're going to be living with a lot of different people um, and getting used to different parts of different communities on campus, which is a great thing. That's what we want you to do. Um, and that's why we have a lot of community building activities planned out for you that our RA, RA, RA students run um, <clears throat> throughout the term. 
We also have a college pantry on campus. So I bring that up um, because food insecurity on college campuses is becoming a big um, concern across the nation. It's not a Pennsylvania thing. It's not a Central Penn thing. It's literally across the nation. Um, and a couple years ago, our Student Government Association um, opened up the food pantry and then we call it the college pantry. Um, so we have a couple different areas there. If you go on our Blackboard page, Residence Life tab, there's a whole tab there for the college pantry. Anyone can submit for it. It's completely confidential. The only ones that will know who's submitting is myself and our mail, um, our mail assistant, Leanne. She will get the package together and let you know when to come pick it up. So it's all easy. We cover cleaning supplies, school supplies, um, non-perishable food items, professional clothing, and personal care items. So just a little bit about that. Also, um, we have two different sections of housing. We have a traditional or underclassman housing. So I know most of you have heard about the suites. I know you saw it in the tour that was just a few minutes ago. Um, so that is seven bedrooms and there's one person to each individual bedroom. So I think I saw a question in the chat about how many students to a room. So there's seven students that can live in the entire suite, but each of you will have your own bedroom. Um, you will also have, there's four bathrooms, two vanity areas, and a common area. So lots of space, lots of chance to get, you know, have some fun activities, get to know new people, but still be able to have your own space and study and um, be successful that way too. Now, if you're a non-traditional or adult student, we do have housing available for those students as well. They are going to be placed in the apartments. The apartments are two bedrooms, one person to a bedroom with a living room, full bathroom, and a full kitchen. So just a little bit different for our adult students. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out about those. A um, couple reminders of any of you guys that are getting ready to move on campus, uh, make sure that you're checking your student email. We send all of our housing documents out through DocuSign. So that is all electronic now. That'll be in your student email. As soon as you see those, when you're at that point in the process, go in, click view documents, fill them out. And then the only thing besides that we'll need is just an updated um, immunization record, which you can fax to us. That is also all included in the email that you receive. Um, one other thing that I like to point out, a closer look is make sure you have renter's insurance. So um, we're not covering any lost damage items. A lot of students come on campus and go through housing orientation and forget that. So don't be afraid, ask your parents. A lot of insurance companies will just add that on pretty easily. It's very low cost. If you have questions, please let me know. Um, also, don't be afraid to get familiar with the CPC handbook. All the policies that we have for housing are in there. I know there's lots of questions for that. I know I have to go, I have to do fun and I've got to do reality and housing. It's just, it's the way we live over here. <laughs> but we look forward to seeing all of you. Um, roommate packets, everyone asks that too. They come out a month before your move-in date. So get all your paperwork in, get all your deposits paid and you'll get your roommate packet a month out and you can start reaching out to your housemates. All right, thanks, Lindsay. Mm -hmm. All right, and I'm just gonna ask our student services um, staff to stay on here for a couple of minutes because we're getting some questions in this chat that I think some of you guys would be best to answer. Um, but before we get to that, um, I know that we all came back to the main room and I know some of us were cut off a little bit early from our presentation. Um, so I know um, I did check with everybody and I think what we were missing was the final slide of the housing scholarship. So Kelly Fox is actually going to go over that with you right now so that you can all hear it um, because it does um, help all of you out. So go ahead, Kelly. Thanks, Lisa. Yes, John and I got cut off at the free housing. So. For students who are planning to live here, as long as you are a full-time student, or I know there's a lot of PTA and OTA students on here taking the maximum number of credits in your course rotation, you will qualify for the free housing as long as you have a 2.0 GPA, you participate in all of the mandatory housing sessions, and you complete the contract. So for those of you who are accepted or have already paid your deposit, I've emailed out the contract. If you have questions on it or need you know, help with it, let me know. For those of you who have not quite been accepted, once you are accepted, it goes out to you automatically in the email that you listed on your application. And once you turn those contracts in, and only when you turn the contracts in, will you see the housing scholarship on your financial aid award package. 
This will cover you for two years, then with a chance to renew, as long as you meet the criteria outlined in the contract. If you have questions on the contract, if you want another copy of the contract, please reach out to me and let me know. Once you sign and send it in to us, we sign it, apply it to your account, and then I email it back to you. So you will have a copy of it on file. Thanks, Lisa. All right, thanks, Cal. All right, so let's get to some of your questions. Um, you guys have been very good. Um, and if you have questions that you haven't entered into the chat, go ahead and throw them at us. We're all here to answer them. Um, one of the first questions we had in one of our breakout rooms was, um, so are there classes on Monday? Um, so I thought, Caitlin, could you help us out with that? Absolutely. So we have a few different kinds of classes. So I'm going to start with talking about our daytime schedule, since I know that many of you are interested in daytime classes. So our daytime classes all either meet Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, or they meet Tuesday and Thursday. So our uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday classes, they meet three days a week, which means they have a slightly shorter class session. It's uh, usually just over an hour for each one. And then our Tuesday, Thursday classes meet two days a week, which means they have a slightly longer class session, a little closer to two hours. Now, if you're in a program uh, like PTA, OTA, or health science that has labs, your classes will be longer. So, uh, so with the labs, those classes do meet for a longer period of time. Now, if anyone is interested in evening classes, those, uh, those meet one night a week per class, and those can be Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, or Thursdays for a three-hour class session. And then if anyone is looking at our online classes, online classes are asynchronous, which means that you'll have due dates for all of your work, and you have to get everything in by the due date. But as far as what time of day you do your work, up to you. If you're that Monday morning, like, up and at them, 9 a.m., I'm gonna start my work, that's amazing. If you are a night owl and you do your work at 2 a.m., also fine, as long as it's in by the due date. All right, thank you for that, Caitlin. I think I have one more question for you right away. Sorry about that. But um, the next question is, if I'm going into the Army after I gra graduate next year, active duty, I was wondering how that would work, not being able to be on campus. Well, first off, thank you for your service. Um, Central Penn is a military-friendly school uh, designated, so we'd love to have you here. Um, so, and there's a few different options. You know, if uh, you are looking at online classes, if you know that you will not be able to come to campus, many of our programs are available fully online. Um, or if you are, depending on what branch of the military, we've had students in the National Guard, who have been able to be on campus for most of their classes and have taken a gap if they needed to be away for their annual training. Um, so depending on your individual situation, reach out to us and we can figure out what's gonna work best for you. Thanks again, Caitlin. All right, um, our next question is, um, is there a reason why um, the fall term starts in October? So Kelly, do you wanna talk about our July term and fall term and the benefits of starting in each? Yep, so Central Penn runs pretty much quarterly. So our winter term begins January and it ends in March. Our spring term begins in April and ends in June. Our summer term begins in July and ends in September. And then our fall term starts in October and ends in December. So for students who think, woo, October's kind of late and you're not an OTA, we definitely have options to switch to our summer term, which begins July 5th. We actually offer students who are not in the PTA program an incentive to start in the summer. It's a $2,000 early start grant, which takes $500 off your first four tuition bills. If you feel like October's too late and you really wanted to start earlier, July 5th is our summer term, and then our fall term again does begin in October. Right. Thank you, Kelly. And our October term actually starts on October 4th this year, um, just in case um, you're marking that on a calendar. Um, I <laughs> And somebody did post about the 11 weeks on and two weeks off schedule. So our terms do do that. So that's why um, when Kelly was talking about the four terms, so you go to classes for 11 weeks and then you have that nice two-week break in between every term. Um, so the next question would be, are there any religious groups, clubs on campus? And I think is, if Adrian's on, I'm going to throw that question to her, but if not, I can answer it. Okay, Adrian. Hello, hello. Let me turn my video on so I can see everybody's faces. Hello. Now, what was, Lisa, what was the question? Um, is there any religious groups or clubs on campus? We do. Right now we have Campus Christian Ministries. Uh, we have, I'm trying 
trying to think if there's any other religiously specific organizations, but the great part is uh, we are super open to students starting their own clubs as well. So if there's something that we don't have here that you'd like to start, there's a process in place that just need a couple of other students that are interested in that same thing and uh, a process through approval with our student government association that you can start your own club. Thank you, Adrian. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, Lindsay, these next couple are gonna be for you in housing. Um, is there a specific move-in day for the summer term or is it over a few days? Sorry. Um, so the summer term right now, we're looking at July 3rd is the move-in day. Typically in your original housing paperwork that we send out to you, we give you the window of time that we have. And then once we get closer and you get your roommate package, you'll get your exact like assigned time and date. But right now for summer, it's looking, it's going to be July 3rd. Okay, thank you. And one more housing question, um, which I think you already answered, but want to make sure it gets out there again. Um, how many can be in a room on campus? So right now we have the traditional housing set up to one student per bedroom and the adult housing set up for one student per bedroom. Thank you again. Um, what is the time span of one course is the next question. Caitlin, do you wanna take that? Absolutely. So uh, like you heard, our terms are 11 weeks long and our courses all run for the whole term. So you'll be taking, uh, if you're a full-time student, you'll be taking roughly four classes per term and those will all run over the course of 11 weeks. Thank you, Caitlin. Um, next up, I'm going to go to Asia. There was um, several questions about if um, becoming a game designer. Um, so she is going to answer that. Um, if you need a high school diploma to be a game designer. Yes, so in order to be a game designer, uh, you absolutely do need a high school diploma. That will be the foundation um, for your entrance into an undergraduate degree because you need at least um, an associate's degree to work in that particular area um, to get maybe a lower level of game design, maybe software development. Um, but for those specialty um, areas, you do need a bachelor's degree in order to be a game designer at the highest level or at, at a higher level than an associate's degree. So the high school diploma is definitely foundational, um, but the very first step to get your foot in the door would be at least an associate's degree in something like computer science or computer engineering. Thank you, Asia. You're welcome. All right. Um, next, either, I believe Kelly can probably take this one, but maybe Lindsay might want to jump in. Um, is the housing application applicable for both years if you are participating in an associate's degree program? I can take it. The housing contract Yes, it's, again, you'll sign the contract. The criteria does remain the same. You need to have the 2.0 and be a full-time student, participate in the housing sessions that are mandatory. And it would be for the two years. Plus, if you were staying, you can renew it then for another two years. All right, stay on, Cal, because you got one more. Um, does the housing scholarship make it free to live on campus or just help towards the cost? So we cover the cost. If you're a full-time student, we cover the entire cost of the super suite. You would still have to pay for the meal plan, the utilities, and then the one-time 250 housing security deposit. So if you're a part-time student or taking part-time classes, we would cover half of the cost of the um, housing. So we cover housing, but you still have the utilities, meal plan, and the one-time 250 housing security deposit. All right, thank you. All right, our next question would be, how do we know if we're starting in the summer or in the fall term? So um, I'll take that one. Um, you would know, um, depending on what you put on your application, of uh, what you applied for and what your acceptance letter would say. Um, however, like Kelly said, if you had applied for fall and got accepted for fall and you're interested after today of moving your application to summer and getting an 11 week head start, um, we can definitely make that happen for you. Um, but uh, Jalen, since you did ask that question, I will have your admissions counselor reach out to you um, to make sure we're on the same page. Now, obviously, if you are on, um, if you are in the PTA program, you will be starting in the July summer term. And if you're in the OTA program, you will be starting in the October fall term. So next we have, um, what are the requirements for students to join um, a sport. Casey, do you want to take that one?
you're coming on. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, sorry. Um, Lise, can you repeat the question, please? Yep. How, what are the requirements for students to join a sport? Yeah, so to join an athletic team on campus, basically you just have to be considered a full-time student. So one of those requirements means you have to be in at least three classes. So during the time of your sport season, you have to be registered in at least nine credits in order to participate in a sport. And then obviously once you're on the team, you'll have academic standards. We push for all of our student athletes to maintain a 2.0 in the classroom. Um, and that's also followed under USCA guidelines. So 2.0 GPA and registered for at least three classes, nine credits in order to maintain your eligibility. Thank you, Casey. Mm -hmm. All right, um, Kelly, this one's for you. The cost for college, does it get divided up into four terms? So when we process your financial aid, if you're starting in the summer term, we'll process it for summer, fall, and winter. And then if you're starting in the fall term, we'll process it for fall, winter, and spring. So you will get financial aid every term that you're here. It's just processed three terms at a time, and then you'll renew your FAFSA form for next year, and then we'll process it for the next three terms. So as you're working through the financial aid process, I will be communicating with you out-of-pocket expenses and options for covering the balances once your financial aid package is complete. Thank you, Kelly. Lindsay, you're up again. I told you you're a popular one. If you have um, any dietary restrictions and need to prepare, cook all of your meals in your dorm or super suite, would it be possible to bring extra appliances such as an air fryer, a countertop yes. oven, etc.? Yes, you'll find that um, when you get your roommate packet, you'll find a what to bring list and that stuff will be included, but you have to use it in the common area. So we just ask that any of those slow cookers, air fryers, et cetera, just don't use them in your bedrooms. Make sure they're in the common area just for fire safety. Thank you, Lindsay. All right, Adrian, I saw you already answered this question, but just in case anybody's not following in the chat, um, do you guys have any dance or cooking clubs? Not at all. We have about 20 clubs and I feel like everyone that you've asked about, we haven't had, but we do have a lot. Uh, we do have dance and cooking related events and we've had dance clubs in the past. So it's not so, definitely something we can do again. Uh, we have a performing arts club, our Central Penn players, they are a ton of fun. And it, so if you like that element of performance, that's probably a great route to go. We have the art club for our creators. Uh, we have some diversity theme clubs, some that are connected to different majors. Uh, so if you look at centralpenn.edu, there is a clubs and activities page that actually has them all listed. I will drop that link in the chat for you. Um, but if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer for them, answer them as well. Thanks, Adrian. Um, Asia, I'm going to ask you this question. Um, does everyone have to take a placement test or even if you're transferring in credits to Central Penn? Good question. So the placement exam is specific to a student's math level. So for students who are transferring in a math course, a college level math course that satisfies the foundations of basic algebra, we may be able to transfer that course in in lieu of a student taking the placement exam. Um, for students who are not transferring in a math um, course from another college, then you would be required to take the placement exam and we would then use that score to determine what the math level is. There are two other exemptions too to the placement exam. If you are a high school student um, or you've previously, even if you're not transferring in credits um, and you are an adult coming back, if you took the SATs and you scored a 410 or higher, um, or you took the ACTs and um, scored a 21 or higher composite score, um, we will um, be able to exempt you from the placement exam for that as well. Um, so if you haven't got those scores into us and you are sitting here right now saying, I don't wanna take that placement exam, then email them to your um, admissions counselor or myself um, once we end this presentation and um, we'll get you all set up. Um, another question for you, Casey, is how come there is no football team? Uh, so unfortunately, we don't have a football team. Historically, we've never had a football team, and I'm not quite sure why. Football takes a large number of guys to get together, and we are a smaller school, so it would take, it would take a little bit to build a roster for a football team on campus at Central Penn. 
But we do have some semi pro teams and things like that in the area. And I do know some students end up going to some of the Harrisburg Shark games and things like that. So if you enjoy watching football, we have some of that opportunity around here. But unfortunately, we haven't been able to to roster a football team yet. But I don't like to count anything out. So we can we can keep dreaming. All right. Thanks, Casey. All right, guys, I think I made it through all of the questions, but feel free, we have um, one more fun activity um, left today, so you can kind of get to know um, each other a little bit more about Central Penn, some trivia, and um, also um, get to meet some of our current students um, who are our student government um, association officers. Um, so I'm actually going to introduce you to, um, even though you've already met them, um, Adrian, who is our Dean of Student and services, and then Casey, who is our athletic director. Um, they are going to be leading you in some CPC trivia to win some gift cards. Um, so definitely stay on um, and win some prizes. And if you think of any other questions, just pop them in the chat and we'll get to them after. Hello, everybody. How we doing? Okay, so do me a favor, drop in the chat if you want to win a prize in this next section, okay? Let me hear some, some comments in that chat window. Who is going to win? All right, I'm getting a couple, keep them coming. There's more than two people on this on this call. I wanna know who wants to win. Jalen says she's gonna win, Sanai's gonna win. SGA thinks that they're gonna win, but they're not. They're gonna help us play. <laughs> Kayla, Vanessa, all right, good, good, good. Joel, Jennifer. I'm excited to see you guys. Excited to see you guys ready to play this game. Okay, so who here has played a Kahoot? Do you know how to play Kahoot? Have you heard of it? See a couple of hands? All right, so do me a favor. Casey's actually gonna share her screen momentarily. It works the best if you have your laptop to do your Zoom screen and, and the questions. Uh, so you can see the, the shared screen, but you're also going to need your cell phone, okay? Does everybody have a cell phone with them? Perfect. So, oh, yes, I see SGA. There you are. I want to spotlight you so everybody can see you guys. Do you see SGA? These are our student government officers. Can you guys un unmute yourselves and un introduce yourselves to this awesome crew? You can't unmute yourself? No, okay, so I will tell you who these amazing people are. <laughs> oh, I just oh, muted them for you, Adrian. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I'm muted now. Hello. Hi, um, I'm Aaron Christiana. I'm the treasurer here at the student Your government. Your major. Oh, and I'm an IT major. Hi, my name is Michelle. I am the president of SGA, and I'm doing a bachelor's degree in business administration. My name is Kristen. I'm the vice president, and I'm occupational therapy assistant. Thank you very much. So we are gonna go ahead and start this Kahoot game, but you guys stay on deck because as we're playing, we're gonna be calling you out and asking you questions, okay? All right, cool. Casey, are we good to share the screen? I am ready, but I also wanted to, because I always like to find out when we have athletes in the group. So while we're chatting, if you guys can also type in the chat, if you're gonna participate on any of our athletic teams, I love to see the names and have everybody pop in. So if we have athletes on the call, Type in your what sport you're going to play too, so I can check that out. And I will share my screen. Okay, so if this is your first time playing a Kahoot game, you're going to use your phone to go to www.kahoot, which is K-A-H-O-O-T dot I-T. You're going to type it into your web browser. And then you're going to enter the game pin that you see on the screen. Okay. Oh, I see Joel's joined us. So again, you're going to go onto your web browser, enter www.kahoot.it, and put in that game pin, which is Oh, we got lots of names, probably 22 of you so far, and the number keeps climbing. Casey, are the athletic questions first or the activities? You're up first, Adrian. Oh, okay. All right. We still have some people joining in. 
29 competitors will give you maybe like 30 seconds. If you're having any trouble, you can let us know in the chat and we can help you out if you're having trouble logging in. 31, oh, come on, one more. 32 is my favorite number. 33 is my favorite number, one more. <laughs> Who's gonna win? Come on, one more. <laughs> I think I might have won this round, Casey. Yeah, you might. My fingers are. <laughs> couple more seconds, couple more seconds. Let's get one more person logged in. Where's, well, where's Kristen? SGA will stick up for me. Log in. <laughs> <laughs> I think you won this one. Oh. There Yay! We go. Oh! Oh no, we went fast. That's better. <laughs> I was going right. to say, every, everybody has their day, Adrian. Hold on to that one, but order has been restored. <laughs> Our athletic director is not competitive at all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. 35, you guys ready to get started? Yeah, and if, they, if anybody wants to join in after the fact, the pin will still show up at the bottom of the screen, so they'll still be able to log in. Okay, I'll get, I'll get you started, Adrian. All right, here we go. New Nights Trivia. How many clubs are currently active on campus? Is it Red 5, Blue 13, Mustard 19, or Green 23? And I am saying the colors just in case anybody's playing completely on the phone so you'll know what, um, what each color means. Look at that, 18 had a correct answer of 23 on campus. SGA, are you still there? Hello. Yes. <laughs> Would you happen to maybe give input on some of the clubs that you're in or some of your favorites? They've been, there's been some good questions oh, yeah. about clubs from this group. Yeah. yeah, so Student Government Association is obviously the best club on campus. We have, you know, we have the most power. So definitely join our club. Uh, there is Student Ambassadors. So if you're into leadership and you want to give out tours around campus, that's a great opportunity. Um, you want to talk about... Um, yeah, um, we have the activities advisory board. Um, we more work on like bringing people out into the campus, you know, to get involved, you know, we have like cookouts, we have, uh, we'll have like game nights in the quad or like as concerts, like there's plenty of things to get everyone out and uh, doing things together. Very good. Thank you. What's our next question? Or I guess who's in the lead case? Oh, Vanessa is a reigning champ with Joel in second, Victoria in third. Lots of questions left. Next up. Which one of these is not a great place to find out about upcoming activities? Is it students, Red Student Central, Blue Blackboard, Mustard, the CPC app, or Green Student Alert? Which of these is not a great place to find out about upcoming activities? I do like that you can use the picture of my calendar up on there. You're correct, student alert. So all the other things that you saw in there, Student Central is the email newsletter that you'll get each week. Blackboard is kind of the platform where you access your classes. We have a special tab on there for information about how to get involved. And if you haven't played around with, with it yet, once you're a student, you'll have access to the Central Pen app where we have pretty much like all of our clubs are in there, all of our activities are in there and a ton of other stuff too. So that's definitely a great resource. Oh, oh I, Isaac came out of nowhere taking the lead. Good job, Isaac. Joel's holding solid in second, Brianna in third. Third question. The activities office on average coordinates how many events per term? Red 20, blue 50, mustard 80, or green 200? How many events come out of the activities office per term? I love this roller skating picture too. Red 20, 
blue 50, mustard 80, or green 200. Okay, it is 80. We do about 80 events per term, so in those 11 week time span. SGA, I'm gonna pull you in. I would love to hear maybe if you have a favorite event that you've done on campus that you might be willing to share with the group. I'm go totally ahead, calling them on. You go ahead, no, you know, you go ahead. Um, well, there, we, have, we do have a lot of events. Um, I personally, my favorite, I love when we do, uh, Casey holds the cornhole tournaments. I really love cornhole. I usually get competitive with that. Yeah, intramural sports are, is really fun. Um, probably my favorite event this far is uh, I think. back to school blast was pretty fun. I mean, before COVID, uh, Central Penn used to allow Petapalooza to come on campus, and I love that because there were so many dogs. <laughs> ten out of ten. It is going to come back in the fall, just as a sidebar. They just postponed it to the fall. So Petapalooza will be here, my favorite yeah. day of the year. You can come back. What's yeah. yours? Adrian, you're going to make me come back for that? Yes, I think that's a requirement. <laughs> I don't know. Do you agree with that? Oh, my favorite event is all, like, when we do, like, the cookouts or whatever. Because cookouts, live music, and games, all sorts of different games, are that's the best. Oh, good stuff. Thank you, guys. Namisha is at the top. SGA is in second place. And Vanessa in third. All right, let's see what we get next. SGA has quite an advantage. They do. A little bit. Central Penn has planned trips to all of these following locations except red, Washington, D.C., blue, New York City, mustard, Virginia Beach, or green, Canada. We've planned trips to all of these locations except red, Washington, D.C., blue, New York City, mustard, Virginia Beach, or green, Canada. Where have we not planned a trip to? Virginia Beach. I feel like that'd be a good place to go. We actually um, do a summer trip to Point Pleasant. It's just a day trip where we drive out and back and get to see the beach and the boardwalk. We have been to Washington, D.C., New York City, um, and we've done service trips in Canada. So all kinds of different places. Oh, all right. Namisha's holding at the top. Alexa in second and Ariana in third. Okay, which of the following is the least effective strategy for getting involved on campus? Is it red, leave campus and return to your room immediately after class? Is it blue, go to a club meeting that you know nothing about? Is it mustard, get a part-time job on campus? or green, log on for bingo each week, which is the least effective strategy for getting involved on campus. You're, yes, lots of reds. Um, leave campus, return to your room immediately. I always say this, like, this is your college experience. It truly is what you make of it. You have the opportunity to make it, like you look at um, our SGA members and all that they've shared, like they have embraced it and gotten involved. Um, and they're having a really great, I hope, really great experience because of it. Uh, and you have that opportunity too. So definitely don't just leave campus. Don't just get back to your room. Pop into that club meeting that you've never been to. You might find an interest you never knew you had. Um, getting a part-time job. There are part-time jobs here on campus that are really great ways to connect. And, you know, I'm kind of proud of virtual bingo that we have every week. So love to see you there too. Little, little mix, little, little movement on the leaderboard there, but Namisha's still in top. Alexa is in second and Catherine in third. Namisha's holding on. We got athletic questions up next. So how many sports does Central Penn offer? Is it red, six, men's and women's basketball, men's and women's soccer, baseball and volleyball, blue, three, men's and women's basketball and baseball, mustard, as Adrian calls it, three sports, volleyball, baseball, and badminton, or five sports, green, men's and women's volleyball, men's and women's basketball, and women's soccer. So red, six, blue, three, mustard, three, or green, five. What sports do we offer? Yeah, I'm going say you got it. Six sports. We have 
men's and women's basketball, men's and women's soccer, men's baseball, and women's volleyball on campus. So I always like to take the time to encourage everybody to try out for a sports team, come find out some more information. You don't have to have played in high school, just come give it a shot, see if it, if it fits. And I know SGA, you guys kind of mentioned intramurals too. So in addition to um, the athletic sports that we offer, we do offer a handful of intramural, or, intramural sports throughout the term. So I guess I'll pull SGA in too, if you guys want to talk quick about what was your favorite intramural sport or what you maybe what games you enjoy going to see. Let everybody know what you guys like to do while you're on campus. Well, like I said, I mean, Casey, you have you had a bunch of great ones. You had the cornhole multiple times. We did, we did bocce ball, we did badminton. Mm -hmm. Casey had a big event called Rackfest where we had like a bunch of different events all in one. Um, we had 3v3 soccer. We have volleyball all the time. Volleyball is a really big one. I like volleyball. Aaron is our is our reigning intramural champ too. So all the all the new knights on this call, when you come to intramurals, Aaron holds <laughs> Kristen. Not I in bocce ball. Not I in bocce ball. Yes. Aaron might hold the most championships so far, but Kristen de is Casey and Kristen decrowned me in bocce ball. That's right. <laughs> Kristen, what was your favorite sport? Or Michelle, do you, I don't, I know you've been to a couple events. Have you guys been to any of the athletic games? Your uh, favorite team to watch? I did, I did attend Wreckfest and Badman and Camden were 10 out of 10. <laughs> what? I stole a cornhole. Cornhole's a big one. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, we'll have Cornhole at Wreckfest on campus this term, so make sure you guys are there for that. But yeah, lots of fun events to get involved in on campus. If you don't want something as time-consuming as intercollegiate athletics, the intramural sports are always fun as well. So lots of things to get involved with. Check out our... Oh, no, Namisha, we lost our SGA bumped up to first place. They technically don't count, though. So... Keep working hard. We'll get a we'll, we'll get a top three here. What is the mascot of Central Penn College? So is it red, the Colonials, blue, the Warriors, mustard, the Knights, or green, the Bears? Red Colonials, blue, the Warriors, mustard, the Knights, or green, the Bears? What is the mascot of Central Penn College? I love this picture of Dion. Me too. It's one of my favorite <laughs> pictures. <laughs> I hope everyone gets this one right. Let's see if we can get 100. Oh, we had two off. Warriors are close, though, but we are the Central Penn College Knights. So anybody know um, SGA? What is our mascot's name? Let's see how much you guys know. We got it wrong, this. but it was Sir Will. There you go. Yep, yep Sir Will. <laughs> now Shining you know. Night. You can see them around campus, and sometimes you'll see them walking around campus. But there's a like huge kind of poster in Milano with like their picture. But yeah, yeah. So our mascot is the Knights, and Sir Will is our mascot. Sometimes Adrian brings Sir Will out to some of the athletic events. We had him at a baseball game this past season. So you know, he likes to come and cheer. He likes to come and and support, support and be part of student life. So you never know where Sir Will will be showing up. Exactly. And he makes a good photo op. So when you see Sir Will, make sure you guys snap your pictures with him. Catherine bumps up to first place. Ariana in second and Alexa in third. Here we go. We got, I think, three, three more questions left. What USCA division do our athletic teams participate in? Red, Division One, Blue, Division Two. Mustard Division Three or Green Division Four? This one's a tough one. Not everybody knows this answer, so we might get some mix here, but Red One, Blue Two, Mustard Three or Green Four? What division do our athletic teams participate in? Pretty good, Division Two. So I get that a lot. A lot of people think we're Division Three, but we are a USCAA Division Two school. So all of our teams compete under Division Two. USCAA is the United States Collegiate Athletic Association. Alexa, Twinkle, and Brianna. 
Two more questions. What are the two main colors of the Central Penn College Knights? This is always a toss up too. We got red, black and maroon, blue, gold and maroon, mustard, orange and maroon, or green, white and maroon. And again, it's red, black and maroon, blue, gold and maroon, mustard, orange and maroon, or green, white and maroon. Yeah, most people think it's gold and maroon, but our official colors are orange and maroon. SGA, did you know that when you started here? Yes, I did. All right, of course you did, Aaron. I don't Never doubt mind. you. Never mind. <laughs> So official colors are orange and maroon, go get some gear. And when you end up on campus, we have all kinds of fun um, intramurals, fun fact, winners of intramurals get to pick out some of the merchandise out of the athletic bin. So you guys can win some swag, t-shirts, sweatshirts, things like that. So it pays to get involved in some of the clubs and some of the intramurals and events on campus. All right, Twinkle moves up to one, Ariana and Alexa. Last question, how many credits must you be enrolled in during the season to be considered eligible to play a sport? And this oh, is- no, the they were listening right. in the earlier section. Perfect question to end on because I did go over this just a couple minutes ago. How many credits? Is it red, six credits, blue, three credits, mustard, eight credits, or green, nine credits? How many credits, not classes? How many credits do you have to be enrolled in in order to be, be able to play a sport? And just in, in case you um, are interested, one class is typically three credits. Adrian always has to try and give everybody an extra advantage. <laughs> <laughs> and they got it. Most of them got it. Nine credits. You have to be enrolled in nine credits, which is three classes, to be eligible to play a sport. So... That's the end of trivia. Let's check out who our winners are. Wish we had a sound effect drum roll. Seth in third. Alexa in second. <gasps> who is it? Twinkle in first. Woo! <laughs> Congratulations. And Casey, do you they win a prize? They do win a prize. I think all three, top three players, get a gift card to our school store, I believe. So we'll definitely make sure somebody follows up with our top three winners from Trivia to get your gift card. We will do that. Thank you so much, ladies, for doing that. And I hope you guys all enjoyed learning about athletics and Central Penn and winning some prizes along the way. So you guys were all very good sports on that. And before you um, sign out, SGA, I'm not sure if you saw that, but um, in the chat, in inspiration of Aaron, do you sell bucket hats? And if well, not, your college store should. We'll have to look into that. I appreciate the compliment. <laughs> I love that. And there's many people that definitely agree with that comment on here. So <laughs> bucket the, hats are, are a thing now, huh? I don't know that I knew that, but I might not be cool enough to know that. Casey, when I see you wearing one next week around campus, we'll know that you're cool now. You know it. I'll have to go look. <laughs> All right. Awesome. And thank you so much, SGA, for joining us and giving us your insight, too, as a student. We appreciate you. All right, guys. I didn't see um, any questions pop up in the chat um, while we were doing that. Um, there was, other than the central... And like the bucket hats. Oh yeah. Nope. No other questions. Um, so if you don't have any more today, we appreciate you joining us for the last couple hours of your Wednesday afternoon. Um, and we hope that this was informative and answered a lot of your questions. Um, if again, please reach out to any of us and we're here to help you every step of the way. Um, and we look forward to seeing you around campus soon. So We'll talk to you really soon. Thank you.